we're going to hook up a, a a system for Niagara to do audio. It's going to sound like this. Now that system is going to be controlled by the particle simulation uh, in Unreal Engine, which is a great way to add sound uh, without needing to get involved with code, uh, without needing to write any complicated systems because we can use particle detection. Now we're going to be looking at these uh, NS or Niagara system, water drips, falling, placeable um, elements, and we're going to make our own version. We're going to make uh, some changes to the Niagara system, and we're going to ch make some changes to the blueprint uh, or make a blueprint as well. First up, we're going to look inside this Niagara system. You can see these particles falling. I've turned on a couple of the debug visualizations here just to make that a little bit more clear. These particles fall. They do have collision. They actually do collide with the world already. And so you might be thinking, well, that's easy. I'll just go on to uh, the Niagara system and add an audio source. And when you try and do that, uh, we're going to start talking about why you can't because GPU reasons. Now, this collision, uh, when we look at this collision, it actually already hooks up um, an element to the GPU depth buffer, which is going to hit uh, the floor. So when, when you see things hit the floor. So you might go up to particle spawn and type play audio and then wonder why compilation fails and compile errors start happening and everything goes into debug mode. And especially if you're on something before UE5, the whole thing completely explodes. So... There is something happening here. Uh, basically, a lot of audio works on the CPU, not the GPU as of yet. There are a couple of people doing some stuff in the GPU space, but we can try and change our simulation target to from GPU to CPU. But I think you need to be really careful here. And generally, the audio person shouldn't be the person changing this because the graphics and tech art people uh, should be looking at this because you're going to see we just have more errors. So is there a way to do this without using the GPU buffer? Well, there is, um, and we're going to be posting events out of uh, Niagara. Uh, so let's go back in, change that back to GPU, and then let's get it to compile. Let's just get rid of the play audio functionality. Great. Now, we're going to be using this collision uh, to post out events. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, the first step is going to the particle update and writing export particle data to Blueprint. Now, this is a special uh, module that we'll be able to use to create a callback handler that's going to um, make a per particle or, or fixed size, depending on if you don't want to um, don't want to spend too much. Uh, it, it does go to say that this is a very expensive system, um, so don't go crazy with this. From the user parameters, we'll need to add a parameter that we're going to send out to our particle data. So I'm just going to make a new object here, and I'm just going to call it uh, BB Collision. So this is going to be the, the, the parameter that handles the exported audio data. Now you can also send some other elements here. So we're going to look at the condition of when do we export the data. For this, we're going to look inside the collision and find... Uh, Oh, yeah, we can use the little uh, green eye to see the actual particles, but we're going to open the filters and show the parameter writes, uh, which is what the collision is writing to. Uh, it gives us an option of what we can look for. And inside here, we can see we have like a collision valid or off screen counter or has collided. Um, we could kind of tie it to any of these um, and they'll have different different write times, basically. But we can see this is a transient value, which the author can decide uh, if the collision is valid to do something. So we're going to hook up the export particle data by clicking this little drop down here and looking for collision and looking for collision valid for the outputs. Great. So we're now sending that. Uh, we need to also set up the callback handler because it doesn't do anything at the moment. So uh, we're going to set that up with the user parameter that we have. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go to the blueprint stage now. Uh, which is great. So moving into the uh, Unreal Engine, I'm just going to make a new Blueprint class. It's going to be an actor type. Uh, it's going to be um, the the Niagara Audio Collision Effects Particle <laughs> Handler System. It's it's a lot. It's a mouthful, but uh, it's, it's a cool system. So uh, inside here, I'm going to make a Niagara system or a reference to a Niagara system with a component because we'll need to drop in the water droplets in the Niagara system. And you should see them appearing in your scene or in your Blueprint Viewer as well. From here, uh, we can go into the 
the event graph and set up some of the logic that will uh, create the behaviors that we're, um, that we're looking to elicit. So get rid of the begin overlap and that kind of thing. And we just need to set up a binding to that Niagara system. So grab your Niagara system, drag out and look for uh, set user, set Niagara, um, what is it, set Niagara variable by string, which is object, which is the type that we wrote in the user parameter. And we're gonna connect that up and check for the, um, it's, it's a user parameter, so it's user, as you can see the little blue tag there. So user dot uh, BP collision, which is the collision name that we said before. And for reference for object, we're just gonna say this. And this is to set up our callback handler um, for that collision event. Now that we have that initial callback handler, we can actually look at well, how do we set up the event. Now, you might do something like go into the um, blueprint itself and, and look for the event, but you won't find it in the events list here uh, because it comes from Niagara. And so instead, the way that it's actually implemented is through an interface. And if you haven't used interfaces before, this is a great explanation or a great, a great you know, undertaking. So go to class settings, look for implemented interfaces, and we're going to add a Niagara particle callback handler. And this particle callback handler is going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. Um, you'll see it pop up in your interfaces list, which means we can then just right click it and implement event. Now for the very first one, the thing the every audio program always does is a print string hello. Uh, so hit a combine and hit run, drop it in the world uh, and hit run. You should see it in the world and you should see it bouncing off now that we have that collision. Right, and so you'll see in a second, we're gonna get a big old spam of hellos. There they are. Everyone that hits the floor gives us a little, a little baby hello. This is fun, hello. So we have this hello system. Now you can connect up a lot of parameters to Niagara. You can get the, the particle data, the velocity, the size, the color, the shape, the whatever, how long it's been around. You can pass all that data through, but today we're not gonna do that. Today I'm gonna to drop in this uh, water drips uh, that I recorded just before and split transients. And it gave me 500 transients and I only used about 10 of them. But we have this cute little water droplets that we can build. We're gonna need a lot of them um, and we probably need more than 10 realistically. So let's move on to the Metasound side of what we're uh, building here and let's build up the Metasound um, source. So this water droplet, um, we're going to have a really, really basic version of this, which is just going to be a random wave array um, that we're going to pre-populate with the specific elements and we're going to play uh, in, a, in a mono wave player. We're not going to do anything else fancy here. Um, there's, you know, you can add a million and one things to meta sounds, and that's that's definitely something you can do. But for this, we're going to be pretty simple. So the only other part here is, uh, let's make this an array, a graph variable, and let's add the water, the water samples that we have. Scrolling down, we can drag those in. Great. So we have a Metasound source now, where when we hit play, we get a very, very teeny tiny quiet um, water droplet, and that's by design. So we've made the print string. We don't need the print string anymore. We need to start playing some sound. We're gonna need a couple of components here because I, I wanna make a little color that uh, gets rid of some of the events so it doesn't just overplay. So for that, we'll need the current time, uh, which is gonna be the audio time of the game itself. Uh, then we're gonna need the last triggered time, so the, the time that the last particle was triggered um, so we can kind of keep that and say like if it's within or past the threshold then you know play it or not for this uh, current time we're going to say if the current time is greater than the last triggered time plus the delay so uh, you know if, if we're at one second and then this triggers every three seconds it's going to wait till three seconds then we're going to be at three seconds and it triggers at six seconds um, and etc so I'm going to have a little time delay component here that I can plug in and connect up my event tick. So this is just gonna be ticking away. I'm gonna have a short branch to say when when this condition's fulfilled, then let, let's go through and let's trigger the thing. Uh, so for that, I'm just gonna make a Boolean because the, the event particle callback is gonna be firing like all the time. And we, we don't really wanna check the, the time, probably better to run on its own, on its own thing. 
So this will just set a flag that says it can play. And from here, we can set up a, another branch to say if we can play and we get this particle data, then we can start playing some sound. Uh, so we're already connecting up what we need. So for here, I'm just going to play sound at location. We don't need to spawn sound because we want them to, uh, you know, clean themselves up and, and all that kind of thing. You'll probably want to populate a few uh, areas here to uh, to variables um, so that you, you can, you know, swap out, uh, swap out different elements. So for here, I'm going to make a meta sound source as a variable and meta sound source. There we go. And when I drag this in, now I will be able to set this on the component as well. Now, you'll probably want to add attenuation, and we are going to go through that a little bit later. I'm going to populate a few of these, or set, set a few of these up um, to be seen in the uh, inspector, just so we can customize this component as we go. And once we've played the sound, we can say that we don't need to play the sound. So we don't want to, um, yeah, we just want to have the two systems turning on and off, uh, which, which would be cool. For there, we got to set up the current time um, and the last triggered time. Last triggered time, we're going to set up to be the current time. Um, and then the current time, we're going to set up to be uh, the the time in seconds. But we're going to use the get audio time in seconds. This means that if the game's paused, um, we don't keep counting and keep triggering as well. So get audio time seconds. This will be from when it started running. Great. Now, if we hit play, you'll probably see an enormous spam in the console. So, uh, looking at this debug uh, sound cues, sounds, sorry, you see we have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot of water droplets uh, because there's no attenuation on these and there's no concurrency on them. So, this uh, time delay, you can see if I turn that down, it really starts firing off. I'm going to add some attenuation settings just to be used in near attenuation. You can obviously add concurrency um, as well to control it from the audio side. I just like doing it from the code side, but I'll probably add some concurrency a little bit later on as well. So dropping this back in the world, configuring the time delay, configuring the uh, play delay and setting the meta sound should actually give us a source if we fly in this super smooth camera um, so we can see the particles hitting the floor and we can look for the sounds and we can see them spawning and we've made a water droplet system uh, this is a great way to combine some of the elements of Niagara with some of the elements of meta sounds um, maybe in a different lesson we might go through and, and do like the different height that the water droplets um, are falling from or the different intensity or the material that they're falling on. And it's very expandable because we can get the physics material. Um, we can connect up a whole bunch of different things through Niagara. I'm a big proponent of Niagara as a way to change the uh, behaviors you have with no little to no code, but there is this GPU thing we need to get around. So I hope this has really helped you get around that GPU problem because you can see this uh, gives us this little positional source. Now, that's not to say that the sound designers that worked on this didn't think of this. It's just that they actually they actually already have a uh, water droplet sort of uh, looped area. Uh, I just wanted to do it physically accurate water droplets um, to the to the ground because. You know why not? It's a it's a great explanation of uh, Niagara and how you can use Niagara um, to make some sound modules. So uh, thanks for checking this one out. Uh, follow, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff, and uh, I'll see you next time.